So we've already discussed two big obstacles to meditation, our emotions and our attachments and habits of thought and perception. The third is probably the hardest obstacle for most people. This, these are namely our thoughts. So our emotions tend to drag us along in a certain direction, kind of like a tidal wave washing us um, away, while our you know, patterns of behavior and attachments tend to you know, solidify us. The thoughts, they tend to, in a way, scatter us, diffuse us in all directions. And thoughts are very difficult to control because unlike the other two, they are not very steady. They are very agile, very mobile. So while an emotion has a certain needs a certain time to build up and a certain time to ebb away and a certain time to change, you can't change your emotion from second to second. It takes a few minutes. And with habits it takes even longer. But with thoughts one second you're thinking of one thing, you snap your fingers, and the next second you're thinking about something completely else. And this is a big problem. So in uh, the uh, Tibetan culture this is called the monkey mind. It was just like a mon monkey which can hop around from tree to tree, from branch to branch, and very easily be distracted by anything new. This is also how our mind is. If something happens, then our mind will latch onto that like a hungry animal and start chewing on it. And if something else shows up, it will grab that and start chewing on that. So our mind is extremely reactive. And it can, of course, react to things which are happening in our environment. So if I see something happening, immediately I will start thinking about it, I will start analyzing it, forming opinions and building scenarios. But um, even if nothing is happening, the mind will, in a way, try to keep the pace going. And it will start to either bring past events forward and rehash them, reanalyze them, or it will start planning future events. And both of these actions are not what we want in a meditation. Um, because only in the now are we able to affect a change, to make remake ourselves. And if all our focus is way in the past or way in the future, then in the now nothing is happening, nothing is changing. If I'm sitting here now and I'm planning my shopping list for tomorrow, oh I need to buy this, I need to buy that, and we're running low on milk and la 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 la, then I'm not growing, I'm not changing, my consciousness is not altering. The only thing which will happen is I might be better prepared tomorrow. Same thing if I'm thinking about my past. What has happened has happened. And no amount of thinking about it will ever change what happened. So, why bother? To be able to really meditate, we really need to be able to keep our thoughts in the now. And that means that we have to be quite strict with ourselves. So if we catch ourselves not analyzing or looking or feeling, but wandering off in time or in place, like I might be thinking like, gosh, how is my friend in Florida doing? And how are my students in uh, Australia? going, then also I'm not focused. And my mind, which is a great problem solver, is really, really not helping me. <coughs> so it can be a very strong habit of the mind to, in a way, keep the peace by avoiding difficult subjects. So whenever an unpleasant feeling or an unpleasant memory comes up or a difficult topic comes up, the mind might decide to jump away, to think about something else, think about something positive, go back to 
some episode in the past, anything to avoid having to confront the current unpleasant situation. So the mind can have an avoidance mechanism and for something which is trying to solve problems this is at best a very very short term solution. So we should train our mind not to do that, not to try to avoid things which are difficult or stressful to it. We have to accept that sometimes things will be difficult, will be stressful, will be upsetting. We have to learn to be okay with that. And if we are okay with being maybe not always happy, with sometimes being sad or upset or troubled, that will help us to stay in the meditation instead of running for the door all the time. So it's important to realize that meditation won't harm us. We are in our own little cocoon. We're separated from the outside world usually when we're meditating or connected to the object of our meditation. And then it's also there because we want it to be there. So there is no danger, there is no threat, there is no need for the mind to run away, to jump away, to continue with its normal patterns. The mind should be a curious mind, our thoughts should be curious thoughts of looking at things, exploring things, analyzing things, getting to know stuff. You know, just like a baby who's, how does it feel, how does it sound, how does it taste. So this is in a way how our thoughts should be when we're in a state of meditation. Just curious, experimental, and not full of judgments. But this is a lot easier said than done. Because as soon as we start to meditate, feelings, thoughts and emotions will arise. Because they are part of the thing we are looking at, or the part of our associations, the thing we are meditating upon. And as soon as something awakens, it can run off with your attention. And this is what happens in a way we, um, if we try to meditate without controlling our thoughts, it is like trying to chase a monkey, trying to catch it while it is jumping through the trees and it will take us for quite a long tour, but that's not a meditation. To meditate we really need to be open-hearted and open-minded. And to feel secure enough and relaxed enough to do that. That's kind of like a big dog. A big dog can be very relaxed while a small dog will often be a little bit nervous and yapping. So this is also more or less the state we need to be in. We need to be self-assured. We need to know that we are safe. We need to know that we are powerful, we need to know that we can handle whatever comes up. Because there's nothing outside threatening us. The only threat there is, is from ourselves. And there's nothing we can do which we can't undo with our, within our own inner cosmos. There's no outside forces involved. So we can think about it one way and then change our mind and think about it in another way again. We should allow ourselves to explore, give ourselves this flexibility. There are many threats to this flexibility. One of the big ones is of course duty, that we feel in a way, bad about stealing time from our other tasks, from our other duties and wasting it on ourselves or on meditation or spiritual practices. And these duties can really intrude. They can continually be screaming in your ear, 
it, but this is not done, that is not finished, this should be better. And they can be very disruptive to your meditation. Also the classical seven sins can be very disruptive if we're angry, envious, jealous, lustful, greedy. So generally anything we have an attraction to or an aversion of will create a disturbance in our thought patterns. So if we in our attitude become much more uh, egalitarian, uh, liberal, like I'm not going to force my views upon anything or anybody, I'm going to respect everybody's freedom. Um, I'm just going to explore the connection, the relation and the possibilities of the relation I have with everything around me. If you start building up an attitude like this, then slowly but surely also your thoughts won't have to intrude as much. But it's a slow process. And especially in the beginning, it can be very useful to have some tools to, in a way, disrupt your thoughts before they disrupt you. Um, one of the things which helps a lot for that is uh, chanting mantras or prayers. And the other thing which helps really a lot is dynamic meditation. If you're focused on your own movement, then your attention is already taken and your mind it's occupied. The same thing if you're um, um, voicing a prayer or a mantra, because these sounds, the things you're saying to yourself are conflicting with your inner dialogue and drowning out your inner dialogue. So especially if you're uh, beginning with meditation, these can be very valuable aids to help you to control the monkey mind. One of the problems also of the monkey mind is that it can sometimes create sensations um, to block you. And if these are negative sensations, like, okay, I'm drifting away into worries about the future or worries about the past, then of course you want to get rid of them, but they can also be very pleasurable sensations. Your mind can take you back to like the first time you fell in love, or some very nice experiences, or some beautiful fantasies, or some even some very enlightening experiences of finding yourself in a, in a sea of light, or love, or uh, being rid of anger. Um, and all these things can be created by your thoughts. But ultimately, even though they may be very, very pleasurable and you might want to experience them again and you might even try to meditate to experience them again, it is not meditation. It is not changing yourself, it is not focusing on what you want to change or what you want to explore within your being. It is ultimately dreaming, it is wish fulfillment, um, it is getting a kind of a, um, a kick from a very nice experience, but all these things are not meditation. And some people feel it is kind of a, um, they're finally meditating right because they're having such experiences which are very pleasurable, very nice and they might feel that they're enlightened or things like this, but ultimately they're just being distracted by their thoughts, by their minds and also sometimes by the higher vibrations they start to become more open to if they start to meditate. Because the more pure you become, the more clean you come, become, the more open you become, the more impulses you will receive from the higher worlds, the more inspired you will feel, the more supported you will feel. And it's of course great to experience this, but also this is not 
meditation nor the goal of meditation. It was just a side effect of the meditation that you start to receive more and more guidance by higher and higher beings. And also this guidance should not be misguidance. It should help you to go deeper, to see things from a different perspective, to experiment with what, who are you, what can you and can you not do or think or feel. Because there is a limit to your flexibility and that is fine. Meditation doesn't mean you're infin infinitely flexible. Your spirit has a nature. Your soul has a nature and also that means your manifested form, all your thoughts, your body, your emotions will reflect that nature and through meditation we can learn to understand that nature and we can become a more and more perfect and pure embodiment of our nature, of ourselves. Meditation helps us to be ourselves and to stay ourselves by not being pressed into all kinds of other patterns which are not us. So if we keep that goal in mind of that we're in a way trying to meet ourselves, to find ourselves through meditation and then to manifest ourselves through meditation, then we can really guide our thoughts in a good way to curiosity of how to find ourselves, how to explore ourselves, but also how to express ourselves. Because the mind is very good at solving problems, but we need to voice the correct problem to ourselves. And the correct problem is not that we are upset or that we are angry or that we like or dislike something. In meditation the problem is who am I? What do I want? And if these fundamental questions can be answered or at least the answers can be sought then our thoughts can become constructive and help in the, in the meditation both the manifesting and the exploration. then also the nature of dynamic meditations will change. We will start expressing ourselves, our power, our energy through our dance, through our movements, through our voice. And we will become more and more connected in unison with the higher parts of ourselves all the way down to the lower parts of our being. So by moving we are in a way also allowing things to realign and the same also with the vibration of our voice. We're also allowing all parts of our being to align again. And we're in a way refounding ourselves upon the basis of our souls. And in a way we are reincarnating ourselves consciously in meditation. So from our soul we build up all these other forms which create the manifest itself, our thoughts, our emotions, our habits, our opinions, our likes and dislikes. And if we are ourselves, we don't get misguided as much, because what we will feel, think, will be in tune with the desires of our spirit and the guidance of our spirit. And you will make much more and much quicker spiritual progress in your incarnation. So, good luck, and I hope you can tackle this very difficult obstacle. I'm sure you will. It just takes some time and practice.